Tyrant and the Nidwits by Steve Housen, illustrated by Daniel Lemon, White Book Band. Chapter 1 Everything was calm on board Captain, Captain Ken's pirate ship, the Crooked Cross Stitch. All the pirates were busy knitting and sewing and stitching. Captain Ken's pirate, Jim Squawkins, was bored. He and Clarence, the ship's cat, Boogie the Crow, and all the ship's mice longed for an, for an adventure. They were all much braver than the pirates. A gentle breeze began to blow, and the ship, st and the ship started to rock. All the cowardly pirates turned green. It's getting a bit choppy, lads, called Captain Ken. Head for your hammocks, me hearties. Quick as a flash, the pirates ran for, for their beds. At last, croaked Jim Squawkins. Time for some action. Boogie, keep a lookout. Clarence, load the cannon. Seagulls, steer the wheel. Mice, put up the sail. As they worked, the animals sang together. We're fearless creatures all I see, which a dream the one day will be free to seek our fortune, gold and jewels, without the blubber and a fools. Chapter two The Crooked Cross Stitch sailed quickly through the waves. From his lookout post high above, Bogey the Bogey called out, Ship ahoy, me beasties! And it's a pirate ship full of proper pirates! The animal crew cheered as they spotted the great black ship. Fearless friends, squawked Jim. Let's show our shipmates what real paint pirating is all about. The crooked car stage sailed closer to the huge black ship with its tattered black sails. The crew of snarly pirates stared in surprise at the ship full of animals and birds. The blue-bearded pirate captain howled with laughter at the sight. Just look at this, he bellowed. The circus has come to see us. What have you monthly creatures got to save for yourselves? Attack, cried Jim. What did he say? said the pirate captain, amazed. But his crew didn't have time to answer. The animal swooped out of the ship with a meow and a squeak, a squawk and a call. The brave beasts flung themselves at the puzzled pirates. The seagulls pecked the pirates' noses and pulled the swords out of their hands. Clarence the cat scratched and spat. The mice ran up the pirates' trouser legs. Bogey the Crow went in search for tre treasure. Grasping his cutlass, brave Jim Squawkins battled the blue-bearded captain. The angry pirate stabbed with, with his sword, but Jim fluttered just out of reach. Jim forced the pirate captain backwards onto the gangplank. The big bad pirate stumbled and wobbled. He took another step back and dropped like a stone into the sea. When they saw their leader had gone, the rest of the pirate crew panicked and jumped overboard. Jim and his animal crew carried the pirate's treasure onto the crooked cross stitch. With a yell of victory, the animal sailed away, leaving their pirates splashing out about in the waves. Chapter three. When the captain, when Captain Ken finally dared to creep, creep out of his cabin, he found the ship piled up with gold and jewels. The sight of all that stolen treasure sent him into a panic. Oh, ship of its boss! He wailed. No, every pirate on the planet will be after us. Hop back to my bed, your me hearties. Parents Squawkins knew they had to hide the treasure and fast. They set they set off for a desert island when island where they saw 
their old pal Jack Sparrowlex lived. When they got to the island, a tall white stroke shuttered out to greet him. It was Jack. He jigged his long legs at the sight of all the treasure. Welcome ashore, he called. I see you've brought some goodies for our collection. Jim and his crew dragged the loot to a huge nest of eggs in the center of the island. Jack Sparrowlegs lifted the nest. There was a door underneath. It creaked open to reveal a hidden cave full of jewels and gold. The animals tipped their new treasure into the cave. Jack shut the door and put the nest back in its place. Thank you, my friends, said Jim. We always knew know where to find our treasure when we need it. Jack snapped his beak in delight. Eggs marks the spot, he cackled. Chapter 4 When the, the crooked cross stitch set sail, again the sky was full of black clouds and an angry wind started to howl. Captain Ken's crew ran back to their beds as the ship lurched and rolled through the swirling sea. Soon a wild storm was raging and Jim and his animal crew struggled to keep control. Be brave, me beasties, screeched Jim as huge waves crashed over the deck. Suddenly the ship stopped, fill, flinging the animals across the deck and hurling the pirates from their beds. There was a sickening crack from below. It's a rock, called Bogey. We met a rock. Cold sea water flooded it. Flooded into the pirates' cabin, the pirates ran around trying to rescue their knitting as the ship t tilted to one side. Quick thinking, Jim and his crew untied the lifeboat and jumped in. The seagulls carried the mice into the boat. Captain Khan called out, Wait for us! The ship began to sink just as Ken and his crew scrambled into the lifeboat. With a gurgling, sucking, creaking sound, the crooked crustage disappeared under the waves. Captain Ken and his miserable pirate sat in a soggy heap. We're all doomed, blubbered Ken. Clarence the cat snarled. Do we have to share a boat with these lily liver layabouts? He asked. Not for long, squawked Jim. I have an idea. I think these pirates may be good for something after all. He flew over to Captain Ken and whispered his plan into the pirate's ear. Luckily, the pirates took their knitting needles and wool everywhere. They quickly got to work and before you can say yo ho ho, they they had made a fine new sail for the lifeboat. Soon the sail was billowing in the wind and the little boat set off across the waves. Chapter five. The, pirate, the pirates and their beastly shipmates bobbed about on the ocean for many days and nights. Then one morning, while they were all dozing, there came a crunch. The boat had run aground on a beautiful white beach. Cat and Cam leaped, leaped ashore, and the pathetic pirates tumbled out after him. They, they lay in the sand, whimpering with joy. Isn't the place for us, boys? wailed Ken. We'll never set foot in a boat again. Come on, crew. Squawked Jim. Let's leave these laser land bubbers behind once and for all. We'll build ourselves a new ship and be proper pilot pirates at last. A month later, the sandy beach was full of holiday makers. They were lounging in the sun, digging and sand and splashing in the sea. The pirates were happy at last. They were selling knitted swimming costumes giving donkey rides and serving ice cream.
Captain Ken was putting on a Pirates Punch and Judy show using his new handmade puppets. The only thing that worried the pirates these days was the thought of getting their feet wet. There was a sounding of squawking and screeching. Everyone looked up. A brightly colored pirate ship sailed in the view. On the side of those the on the side of the ship was the name the Beastly Buccaneer. Seagulls flapped around sails, the ship's cat sat grinning on the deck, the rigging was full of scurrying mice, and a crow perched on the highest mast. Sitting at the front of the ship, holding a cutlass and squawking loudly, was a green and red parrot. It was Captain Jim Squawkins setting off at last for a new adventures with his crew. As they drifted away, the beastly pirates sang all loud. We're fearless creatures off to sea. At last our dream came true. We're free to seek our fortune, gold and jewels, without those blubber-headed fools. The End